Thank you for taking the time today to have a look at the Sidewinder conveyor design software by Advanced Conveyor Technologies. Uh, the Sidewinder software has been commercially available for well over a decade now. It's been used by hundreds of engineers to design thousands of conveyors worldwide. Uh, this includes everything from small, short, little, uh, light tonnage conveyors to medium size in-plant conveyors to some of the most complex conveyors in the world. Uh, this includes some of the longest horizontally curved overland conveyors in the world, uh, some of the highest powered and highest belt ratings in the world, um, and, um, and much more. Uh, there's an enormous amount of depth to the software, uh, far more than we can cover in this brief uh, overview. Um, Sidewinder will uh, give you everything from the basic parameters such as belt widths, belt speeds, motor sizing, all the way to details such as uh, uh, shaft and turn down radii, uh, bearing and idler selection, um, even uh, specific uh, manufacturers, uh, components, and, uh, and in some case part numbers. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. If you've went ahead and installed the demo version when you open Sidewinder, uh, you're going to see there's a number of uh, demo files that have been installed. And essentially these are conveyors that have uh, the calculations run for them that we've uh, put together for you, the end users, uh, that you can go ahead and go through and take a look at. Uh, there's a simple fix take-up conveyor, an incline conveyor, a decline conveyor, uh, there's some SEMA 6 examples straight from the SEMA 6, which is kind of nice because you can compare those right to that. Uh, incline decline conveyor, a number of SEMA 5th examples. Uh, there's an apron feeder example from some published papers, tripper conveyor, uh, reversible conveyor with uh, um, so you essentially have material uh, on the carry side, but it's going both in forward and the conveyor can reverse and go in the, the reverse direction. Uh, there's a very complex overland conveyor. This has horizontal curves on it. Uh, likewise, it also can, can carry material on both the carry and the return side. Uh, it's got all the different load cases for that in, 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 in it, so that's a, a quite detailed and complex example. Uh, there's an example of a pipe conveyor, again, off some published papers. Uh, there's a tree, 3D train uh, modeling example that shows uh, importing the 3D train from a third-party CAD package and how you work with that in Sidewinder. Uh, there's also some stockpiles, a couple, a linear and a radio stockpile. The stockpile feature is sort of a, a standalone feature. We just had a lot of users that uh, uh, wanted that, so we added that in there. It's quite nice for uh, estimating stockpiles. Uh, you can put uh, any number of stockpiles uh, however you want. Uh, you can put reclaim points uh, uh, wherever you want and rat holing and whatnot. You can, can uh, um, calculate in that. And then there's, uh, at the end, there's a, a shaft example using the Australian AS1403 uh, uh, shaft specification that conveyor is, is built into Sidewinder as well, so you can take a look at that. Um, for today, we're actually just going to go ahead and say a new file. We're going to just do a, a, a short little conveyor here from scratch. Again, don't have nearly the time to go through the details of doing this conveyor design, but just want to get you a feel for the software. Uh, so let's go ahead and say we're uh, going to design a 2,500 tons per hour uh, conveyor to transport coal. So the very first thing we need to do is go ahead and put in the conveyor profile. And that can either be done in the easy profile or um, in the vertical profile. The vertical profile uh, is generally what I normally work in. You can do anything you want in here, put elements, drives, motors, wherever you want. Uh, you can import straight from AutoCAD. So if you've got an AutoCAD file, you can directly import that profile. You can invert uh, uh, the, the carry side, return side, concave, convex, curved. If you've got the drive arrangement, you can go ahead and import that. Um, we're going to actually just start with the easy profile. Lots of people just use the easy profile. It's a great starting point as well. Um, so it's it's pretty much a what you see is what you get. So we're going to just enter our elements, lengths, and heights for this conveyor. And I've just put together something here that's relatively um, simple but shows some complex features. So we're going to go over 75 meters and we'll go over 150 meters. Sorry, I went and update that. Um, 
uh, sorry, 125 meters, down 20 meters, then we'll go over 150, up 15, and then we'll go flat again for 75 meters. So I like this because it's going to show us with an, a decline and an incline case, so we can see those those two cases here. So that's kind of a nice example. So you can go ahead and, as I say, just enter your, your element length and height. Uh, you can also enter the radii if you want. If you don't know, you can leave these blank. If you do know them, you can go ahead and enter them. Part of Sidewinder is to calculate the convex and concave curves, uh, what's required for belt lift off, what's required for, for edge stresses. Uh, so you can go ahead and put in you know, pretty much anything you want. Sidewinder will come back and calculate and say, oh, that's okay, or it's not okay. Um, next, we're going to choose our, our head and tail layout. So again, if I click, if I just click on the tail layout, there's a number of predefined uh, tail pulley layouts for me and tail and drive layouts for me. Uh, most users are probably going to use just a straight tail pulley or maybe a tail pulley and a snub or maybe the take ups at the tail. Um, but certainly if you've got tail drives or any other conf configuration, a horizontal uh, take up uh, configuration like this, you can go ahead and just select any one of those. Uh, for now we'll just pick tail take up. At the head, if I go ahead and click on the head, I can again select a number of just different drive configurations. Uh, quite common would be this one, a drive with a snub pulley and a vertical take up. We've put our take up at the tail, so I'm going to just pick a head drive and snub pulley. Simple as that. Now I could go ahead and put in some other details, pulley details, carry idle or spacing, um, and other information here, but I'm just, just going to leave it at that. And so what this actually has done is this has went ahead and created this vertical profile for us. And if I go over here and zoom in, I can see that our head that we had just set a, a motor and a pulley, you can see it's actually created four elements there. So we've got a motor, it's put a little uh, belt wrap in there. Um, our conveyor itself, it's already broken this up. This first element is broken up and put a load point for us there. Um, so that's just kind of the, the nice thing about the easy profile. It's went ahead and just kind of did that sort of stuff for us. So that's our that's our geometry or that's our, our profile input. And that's actually this button right here, this geometry button. Our two other windows that we'll use quite often are the project information and our main input window. Um, let's just jump into the project information real quick. So this is general information about the, the, the conveyor, the project, the name, the location, client, just whatever you want. You can also put some, some comments in here that aren't printed in the report that you just want to put for your own personal or for the next engineer or whatever, some, some comments about the design. Um, ambient temperature, uh, whether we're going to work in English or metric. Um, at any point in the design, we can click this little button here. It switches all our inputs and outputs automatically from English to metric. Um, <coughs> our solution methodology built into Sidewinder are all the SEMA, SEMA 5th, 6th, 7th. If you choose 7, you can choose a rubber type. The DIN and ISO, you can select a DIN factor, leave it blank. Um, CS factor, same thing, calculate that automatically, whatnot. Um, another published uh, calculation method. Uh, for now, we'll just leave it at SEMA 5th. This is our design criteria. Sidewinder lets us leave a lot of things blank. Um, and it goes ahead and chooses those for us. And it's going to make those choices based off of our design criteria. Um, in general, there's not a lot here that, that you may change. Um, a lot of people change what they want for coefficient of friction for rubber or ceramic lagging and for running or momentary. So momentary is obviously starting and stopping, braking, that sort of stuff, whereas this is steady state running. Um, the pulley shaft design criteria, how you're going to, what tensions you're going to use to design your pulleys and your shafts is, is set in here, whether you want to include the dynamics or not. If you want to include any additional tension multipliers, you can do that here. Um, our belt ratings and safety factors, again, defaults for 10 to 1 for a fabric belt, 6.67 for a steel cord. Um, uh, belt criteria, uh, that's how we calculate our belt safety factor based off of the DIN standard or, or off, um, off the straight uh, belt rating um, and our location. Uh, the location will again also select different components and I'll show you that in, in, a, in a minute. I'll show you how you can select different worldwide regions and it uses the standards for those regions. Um, our load condition is really what cases we want to run. Um, you're always going to have full and empty, so an empty conveyor and the fully loaded ca conveyor. But you almost also might have summer and winter, and that's what essentially our high and low friction. Our high friction would represent what our maximum power is. So if we click on this, we'll get a high friction case, and that's set in our frictional conditions, low and high friction. 
Again, high friction is going to be our maximum power, so it might be our minimum temperature, our winter condition. We might increase our accessory multipliers and our idler drag and um, maybe increase our belt uh, uh, covers just due to manufacturing tolerances to get the heaviest belt mass and those sorts of things. Um, our low friction is going to be our summer, or if we've got a downhill conveyor, we want the uh, maximum regeneration. So we would reduce those. Um, and SEMA, it's got uh, a factor of 0.67 for all of the uh, um, multipliers there, your rubber moss multipliers, to get the reduced drag for, for that condition. Um, likewise, for this conveyor, um, we would have a decline load and an incline load that we'd also not only just fully loaded we want to look at this decline and incline load and we're gonna to get to that too for a second let's just run it with just empty and full for now um, our last input window now is our main window and this is where you'll spend most of your time this has got all of the rest of the inputs for the conveyor material properties our take up our motor information reducers, brakes, backstops, all our pulley details, our dynamics, our starting and stopping, that sort of information. <coughs> Excuse me. Our belting information, all of our idler and our idler details. So we've said we're going to go ahead and use coal. So if I can go ahead, I can go over here and I can select from a number of preset materials that we've got built into Sidewinder, uh, coal. And we said 2,500 tons per hour. So um, you also notice here there's a user library. The users can go ahead and there's a whole customizable user and equipment database here that you can set your own materials, your own belting, your own idlers, your own pulleys, and you can put those in. And they may be stored for a project, um, may be stored for specific manufacturers that you use. And that's really, really useful and really, really handy. Um, likewise, uh, for example, for the belting, if I come over here and click, there's a number of already pre-built uh, Conti, Fenner, Goodlap, Dunlop, you name it, uh, belts. And I apologize, this is probably going off the screen, or it is going off the screen for you. Um, but if I I go down here to Conti Fleck and I pick a EP1400 belt. It goes ahead and grabs the data straight from the, the Conti catalog, puts that in there, as well as pulley diameters for you, belt troughability, and load support. And if I go over here to the details, I can see it's put in a core belt thickness. If I look at my load support details, it's already put in my all my uh, my max belt width for load support. Uh, min width for troughability and my required pulley diameter. So that's pretty slick. Um, again, I'm going to just clear this. So all we've entered at this point is just our tonnage, coal, and we've entered our basic conveyor profile. That's it. Now if I go up here and uh, I click the little calculator, it now runs a calculation almost instantly. But yet it's looked at both the full and empty cases and it's all the stuff that we haven't entered, it's went ahead and selected for us already. We can see it's selected a 110 kilowatt motor, it's selected an 1800 wide fabric belt, EP634 ply, top and bottom covers for us, um, our belt tension, safety factor, belt sag, it's selected idlers and idler spacing, pulley diameters for us, um, all automatically. Uh, if I go ahead and look at the cross-sectional um, profile of the belt, we can see it's, as we said, 1800 wide running 3.3 .3 meters per second. Now there's nothing to say that I can't just go up here and say I want to run the conveyor at 2.5 meters per second. So since I specified that, now when I run the calculations, you can see, oh, now it's selected a 2200 wide belt running at 2.5 meters per second. Or if this is 4.5 meters per second, if I run the calcs, I can see it gives me a 1600 wide belt. Conversely, if I went and entered, say, a 1400 wide belt here and ran it, you'll see it'll select the belt speed of 5.5 meters per second. Also, any of these inputs that have the little stars by them mean I can right click and select kind of default values. For example, for the width here, I can right select and say, okay, it's 1000 or 1200 or 1400. And you also notice it's got 1000 here. Well, if we were, say, working on a project in South Africa, for example, if I click click Africa for a world region and come over here and select, I can see now it's got 91050. Those are the standard belt widths over there. So depending on what region we're, we're working with, the standards and the internal libraries that it selects from will, will vary. I'm just going to go back to North America here and run that at the 1400 wide belt. And there we go. Um, we've 
see some red here, and that's essentially saying, well, the vertical curves are okay, but there's a problem with this conveyor and belt flap. You better check that. So if we go over to the belt flap, we can see that this happens to be the belt flap ratio. We're kind of just getting into a mode two flap. But the, the idea, the point here is that any items that uh, you enter incorrectly, or if I went over here for the motor power and I put in 50 and I ran this, it's going to select and show you, oh, hey, you don't have enough power and you've got some issues starting this conveyor. don't even have enough power to, to start this conveyor, um, which is really, really very nice and powerful. Um, so again, these were all input windows. These are all output windows. Um, just run through, running through these very quickly quickly. The case is again a general summary, overview summary. You use that quite often. All the core information uh, are material cross-sectional loading. A power graph showing us where the power is being distributed. We can look at that as kilowatts or we can show it as a percentage. We can quickly see, oh, half of the power is going to rolling resistance. We got 20% uh, going into material lift. Our details for our belting. If we select a steel cord belt and run it, we'll see we'll even have uh, cable estimated cable diameters, splice lengths, the number of cables in the belt, all sorts of details for the, the belt. Uh, our um, belt cycle time, um, the weight of the belt, worn belt mass, all of those details are in the, in the belting. Idlers gives us all our idlers details. Take up. We've simply specified a simple gravity take up. Um, if we had a hanging mass, we could put a 0 to 1, 0 to 0 cable ratio there, and that gives us a hanging counterweight. If we select some other ratio, say a 2 to 4 ratio, you can see it actually shows us a nice picture. And in fact, it will give us the cable tension and select uh, calculate a required cable diameter and sheave size and that sort of information for us as well, as well as properly give us what our take up. Uh, pulley and our take up uh, uh, counterweight displacements are going to be. Motor information as well as all of our reducer information. If I went over in the reducers and select one of the specific uh, manufacturers, say a Siemens or Rexnord, and went ahead and run the calculations, it automatically comes up and says, okay, you've selected the SEMA. For your current speed and pulley diameter and whatnot, the required due reducer ratio is 19.04. But if you look that up in the catalog, the exact catalog ratio for this specific reducer is 19.94. Um, so there's a whole plethora of different uh, uh, manufacturers in there. Uh, all the Dodge Torque Arm 2 stuff is in there. In fact, it'll calculate uh, not only that, it'll calculate uh, the required belts and sheave sizes for that, which is very, very nice and very, very useful. Your different, uh, you can select your different V-belt type, A, AXB, BXC, all of that is all built into Sidewinder. Extremely powerful. Um, let's clear that again. Brakes, we don't currently have any brakes on this. Our pulleys and our shafts. So this gives us our pulley information as well as our, our shafting information. Now this is more of just what it's selected. If I want to really drill down in the shafts, I can go to the detailed page over here. So just like this is all our output, if I go to this detail, these are all those L pages kind of expanded, if you will. Um, more details on our take up. If I go to the shaft here, we can see that I can select any one of these shafts. And if I go to SEMA, for example, it gives me all the SEMA calcs. So I could look at a specific point along that shaft. And we've really tried in Sidewinder to give you, the engineer, all of the internal calcs. We don't want stuff hidden from you. We want you to be able to see, hey, how did it get that number? And you can go back into the details of this and say, all right. You know, here's the equation. Here's all the factors that were used to, to calculate that safety factor at the hub and that safety factor at the bearing and you know, why you needed these, these selected uh, diameters that it selected. Same goes for the different specs, the AS1403 spec, if you want to look at that. Uh, the bending moment across the shaft and deflection. Um, all of those details. Uh, backstops. Um, haven't looked at those yet. Um, we're going to get to those in a second. Uh, stringers. Uh, you can see here, again, we have entered hardly any information at all on this conveyor. I mean, we've essentially entered 2,500 tons per hour of coal, and in this case, we've selected a, a belt width, and it's selected a stringer arrangement for us. Uh, again, there's a whole structural section here that you can select different uh, st stringer configurations. Uh, it's got built-in stringer channel sizes for you, built-in channel sizes. Uh, with that, it'll calculate what the stringer deflections are and what your different loadings are under different conditions. Uh, the project just summarizes all the different load cases. 
um, our loading conveyor. So a minute ago we mentioned the empty belt and the full belt, but what about this decline or this incline load case? Well, if we go back to our project information, we can click some of these options here and we're going to go ahead and just say, hey, let's click incline and decline. So what this has done is it's added an incline case under high friction and it's added a decline case under low friction for us automatically. It's also just standard for our fully loaded case added a low and high friction case. So just by selecting that, if we come back here we can see we just have these two cases and again we had a 145 kilowatt motor. If I now rerun it, it's got all these additional load cases again fully loaded, but here's our incline case here's our decline case. And if we look, now it's selected a 280 kilowatt motor. Obviously this incline high friction case has dramatically increased the, the motor power that we needed. Um, so again, just by selecting, all right, let's look at that load case, boom, we're done. We can create custom cases. Um, maybe we had some, uh, you know, we want to load say just the, the largest two inclines or the largest decline or whatever we want. Um, we may want on this conveyor to actually load the inclines, just load the inclines, and do it under uh, low friction. Just like we had the inclines and flats under high friction for our max power, we might want to do the inclines under low friction. That's going to show us what our maximum rollback torque would be, essentially, or do we need a backstop? If we run those calculations and look that, we can, I see right there, material lift is 11.6 BS, highlighted in red. Well, that actually BS stands for backstop. Backstops, none installed, but they're required, so we've got to go ahead and add a backstop on our conveyor. If we do that in our component page, we could come over here and say, oh, let's add a backstop on motor one, just like that, simple as that. Rerun our calcs, oh, that's one away, and it's automatically sized the backstop for us. So that's our loading. Tension, just showing the tensions for each one of our load cases. Again, um, the purple line is our running tension, blue is our starting tensions, and this uh, dotted kind of uh, dark uh, green line would be our, our stopping tensions. Next we have the elements. Uh, the element output is essentially uh, every single element where the calculations are done at. Uh, we've got in our idler spacing, L10 life, shaft deflections, all of our starting and stopping tensions, essentially just in a tabular form. In Sidewinder, almost all of the output windows, you can also right click and copy. For example, I could copy this and go into Excel and just simply paste and boom, there's all the values cut and pasted from, from Sidewinder. Uh, this holds through for a lot of these uh, tension plots. If I copy the, the tension plot and go into say Word and paste it, I can just paste an image just like that. Um, many, many of the input and output windows you can just right click, copy and paste. Um, with the elements, uh, again, we want the users to be able to back calculate everything. So for every single element, uh, it shows you what the tension differential is and in fact how that tension differential was calculated. So for example, for element number five, what the lift force is, so that's the material lift. The belt force, that's your KY or your indentation and whatnot losses. Here's your idler drag losses um, and just the idle, other idler, which would be uh, essentially the misalignment uh, losses for that element. Um, if you've got a feeder, uh, what the feeder point drag is, the pulley drags, and then any extra drag that would be for um, um, uh, belt scrapers and whatnot would be extra accessory losses. So all of those are, are broken down for every single load case. Um, I guess I didn't specifically say, but these are all the load cases that we set up in our load case table. Uh, EM is for empty, FL is for full, IF inclines full, um, uh, declines only, inclines only, and then the dash and the letter is the friction case. So N is for normal, L is for low, H is for high. So example, this is fully loaded high friction, or if I put my mouse over there you can see the tool tip come up. Vertical curves. Uh, currently those radii that we put in were acceptable, but you can see here that uh, for example for the concave curve uh, for, for steady state running the uh, minimum required radius is 277 meters. Uh, for starting 
uh, for the lift off worn belt. So this would be starting the belt after it's been worn in and some of the covers have, have worn in. Uh, you need 397. So our 400 was was dead on. Obviously, if we had if that was too small, it would have highlighted it here as well as in our case tables. It would have would have highlighted here saying that we've got an issue with our vertical curves. And again, we can completely drill draw down on our vertical curves if we go into our detailed page and come over to our vertical curves here. And now we can look at, again, every single load case, uh, the tensions for every one of those load cases on each of our curves and really see exactly what is dictating it. Is it um, uh, due to uh, min stress, due to belt lift off? If the belt is lifting off, it'll give us an uh, estimate of how much it's lifting off, um, those sorts of, uh, of really good engineering information. Uh, belt flap. Our loading point, uh, again, we haven't talked much about the loading point, but there are a number of uh, built-in uh, methodologies in Sidewinder for calculating the, the material load point, whether it be just pull-out or uh, for feeder belt and feeder belt design. Uh, if you come over to the calculation method here, click on that again, the tooltip. There's SEMA, there's Roberts, Reasoners, Bruffs, Johansson, uh, various published methods for calculating pull-out forces for I say whether it be just a conventional conveyor or if you're calculating an apron feeder and those are all listed here and that final drag then is exported for that element right here so again you can backtrack if you want to say okay that's feeder point drag is 4331 where did that come from well I can go into the, the load point and actually back, cal back calculate where that came from Belt transitions all your conveyors have transitions so by default it just uses um, uh, the the uh, SEMA method, but you can go ahead and, and pick uh, the ISO if you want to work with the ISO method, uh, the DIN, um, or say David Beckley's got a published paper that quite a few people use for head and, and uh, uh, tail uh, pulleys, but it'll show you what all the stresses are, what your transition lengths need to be. If you've got a number of, of, of uh, idlers there, for example, if we say maybe five meters, we'll go every two meters, or let's go five meters and every one meter. Um, it'll put all our idlers in there. If the pulley is elevated, it'll give us the packing height for the idlers, as well as what the uh, the uh, transition idler angle is for each of your idlers. So that's pretty slick. Uh, trajectories, what the trajectory is off the head pulley. Again, I can right click, copy this. I can actually export this to AutoCAD as well. I can dump it out to a DFX file. Um, Transfer chute, this essentially just gives us, if we're feeding another conveyor, what the uh, amount of material fill we're gonna, is going to be in that transfer chute. So that's a very handy uh, tool as well. So that's really a, a quick, uh, very quick summary of the output windows. Um, we haven't talked about the idlers at all yet. Uh, the whole idlers can be customized. Uh, Sidewinder clearly supports a three-roll idler set, a four-roll, five-roll, six roll as well as pipe conveyors um, in fact each individual roll can be customized uh, so for example this three roll I could say okay yeah we've got a 45 degree trough or 30 or whatever or I could go in here and I could actually customize this and say you know what um, I'm gonna use a 127 for the center and a 178 for uh, or sorry for the wing and 178 for the center so you can go ahead and customize. You can give each one a different roll drag. You can give different lengths. I can say, okay, I'm going to uh, shorten the center roll by 40% or increase it by to 40% of the belt width. Or I can actually enter a number in there if I want it, you know, 500 millimeters or, or whatever. Um, so you can completely, completely co customize the idler set. Um, idlers, you can use up to seven different idler sets on your conveyor. And in your geometry, you could specify and say, okay, I'm using this idler set here and then this idler set here. Or in my convex curves, I'm going to reduce the idler spacing from one meter to a half a meter. Um, you can pretty much do anything you want. Like I say, you can use up to seven different idler sets on your conveyor in Sidewinder. Some of the uh, output results, or I mean the uh, reports, uh, if we click on the little printer icon and I want to dump out the report, if I just click the report tab here, I get a very nice uh, summary report. Uh, you can see this is a detailed summary of all the 
core information about the conveyor. It's a nice little five-page summary of uh, the conveyor and the um, uh, pulleys and, and pretty much all of your details. Any of the uh, example files, if you're running the de demo version, you can dump out any of those example files to report. If you want more detailed information on anything, material or pulleys or take-ups or whatever, you can check those. Um, you can actually, I'll just check all of them once and dump out a report. And now we get a fully detailed report of this conveyor, all our different load cases that were used. Here's our take-up details um, and take-up displacements, all of our pulley, pulley details. Each individual pulley goes through and specifies for each pulley what the design tensions are, what all the stresses are, what our deflections are, for again, for each individual pulley. Here's our uh, transition idlers. Here's our different load cases. Again, we might have different materials on this conveyor. Might have two or three different materials that we run. Might have different idler sets. They would all be shown right there. Um, structural and structural loads. Again, something else we haven't talked about. Uh, there are a full set of over five hours of, of video tutorials on Sidewinder that you as the end user can go ahead and, and take a look at any time uh, discussing all of these in detail. Here was our power calculations, our individual element um, details for, for everything, and uh, so on and so forth. Um, you can also dump this out to a CAD file. If I click CAD here, and we'll just call this uh, test. If I dump that out and I open up AutoCAD and open that file, there we go. It's very, very nice. Regen this. Get everything as proper and dimensionally correct. There's our belt. There's our idler configuration. There's our stringer set and stringer layout. Here's our head layout, our tail pulley layout. Here's our, our overland conveyor profile, a bunch of specs on the conveyor. Individual pulleys for each of our pulley types, our high tensions, medium tensions, low tensions. It would show all the pulleys right here that we're using it. There's actually only one pulley for each of these, but if maybe five pulleys were using that pulley tension, it would show all of those. And then for each uh, each one of those, it shows what all the tensions are and uh, the design tensions and whatnot that were used for that pulley. Again, all dimensionally correct. Our transitions, um, our material trajectories, boom, just by clicking that out in, the output, uh, in uh, AutoCAD, that one button. Uh, likewise, you can dump it out to Excel and I dump all the data out to Excel. Um, some of the advanced features, uh, load on and off calculations, simply uh, will load the conveyor on and off. You saw the conveyor load and unload and shows you what the power is. So you can look at peak power if you've got some unusual loadings or whatnot. Uh, there's a whole section on turnovers. Horizontal curves, again very advanced topics. Uh, the stockpile calculations, and another thing, you can just take a look at the demo and, and work with different uh, uh, stockpiles. You can put as many reclaim points as you want. Uh, again, dump this straight out to AutoCAD. Um, another very useful uh, feature is the Sidewinder projects right here. If we go into the projects, this essentially lets me open a number of individual Sidewinder files. So if I go ahead and click here, and for example, I'll click here and I can say, let's just look at these SEMA examples. I can select as many conveyors as, as I have. Maybe I've got 10 conveyors on a project or 40 conveyors on a project. Basically brings all of those conveyors in in a nice spreadsheet summary here of what all the basic parameters are that were for this. So running tensions, momentary tensions, conveyor profiles, material properties, all of the core stats of these conveyor designs. Again, I can right click, copy this, paste this to Excel, um, dump this out to an Excel file, shows me all my load cases, all the pulleys, all the pulley design tensions, even goes through and lists uh, the individual equipment. So it looks at all these files and says how many different belts are used, how many different idlers are used. For example, uh, two of these conveyors use the same um, idler, so it adds them together. So you can get a, no, a bill of quantities uh, for your whole project, uh, which is quite nice. Another quite useful feature is uh, essentially the language support. Uh, if English isn't your native language, if you're Spanish, Portuguese, French, Italian, uh, we do support a number of other uh, languages in Sidewinder. If you simply uh, go up and select that language, you'll see all of the input and output are automatically uh, converted for you. It's, it's very powerful, very nice, uh, as well as all the reports and whatnot will all be uh, converted uh, as well. 
which is um, yeah, quite a nice feature. Um, if you're in Chinese, Chinese is fully supported. Uh, so that's uh, that's very very useful as well. Uh, we'll go back to the English, uh, but I think that pretty much gives you a very course overview. Again, um, there's, there is a lot here, uh, but you can certainly see the power of the software um, and its flexibility. Um, we are always adding and making changes and adding new features and improvements to the software, no question about that. And that's primarily now driven uh, off of user feedback. So if you ever have anything you'd like to see or see added, just let us know. And uh, certainly if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to drop us an email at info at ACTech.com. Thank you.